Welcome to episode 103 of Court Advantage Random Thoughts Podcast. So um, let's talk today about recovery. Yeah, we've kind of touched on it in bits through a lot mm. of other episodes. We've about ice bars and rolling and stretching, but we've never actually, and it comes up a lot in the gym. Mm. And we've never actually done one where we specifically talked about what are good strategies, what doesn't work, what works best, and put it all together into a plan. When, you, when we were talking about topics last night and you said this, I was like, I feel like we've talked about it, but it's never been in one. It's been on the periphery of another conversation. It's been it's never it's been always there. recovery is always like a tied into something else. Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, so the most important thing with recovery. So recovery is a huge area. It's very important. If you're recovering right, it can make a big contribution to your development. It can help you sidestep problems. It's a really important area. It reduces your risk of injury. And the thing is, it accumulates in it accumulates not in the recovery itself, but in the fact that you can put more in when you actually train. Mm. So if you're recovering faster and better and more efficiently, every time you step on the court, field, track, in the pool, you're more ready to go. Yeah. So your nervous system is primed, your muscles are good, your joints feel well, so you can actually give it, you know, like, like the old saying goes, 110% every time you step out there. And that's where the difference mm. adds up over the course of a year. Every session is just a couple of percent better. That's how you make superstars. And, and it's worth noting that that's actually how most performance enhancing drugs actually work. Mm. It's, it's not so much they're enhancing the performance as they're enhancing the recovery from the performance, which then underpins more um, performance. Yeah, that's a, that's a big myth, isn't it? People think, oh, you just take it and you sit on the couch and you get massive. Yeah. You've still got to do the work, yeah. but it just allows you to do more work. Yeah, and you just recover better and better. Yeah, uh, definitely do not try those though because the no. side effects are horrific and they're illegal. <laughs> yes, exactly. There's a whole bunch of um, stuff. But I think, I think when you couch it in those terms, it reminds you of how important it is. The fact that the the single, you know, most sought after way of illegally making yourself better is actually a re- essentially a recovery agent, a recovery booster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, having said that too, uh, I think it's important to, to be clear that. There is no substitute for time. Yeah. We're going to talk a lot about stuff today. That and strategies going, and tactics. And it's going to, going to help uh, to recover better and, and faster. But there's still fundamentally that, that super compensation cycle of apply a stimulus, there's a level of damage, the body needs time to rebuild, replenish, and, and recharge, it recharge and, and be stru- structurally stronger in order to go again and again. Yeah. Um, and and the, the time is often for a lot, a lot of things seventy two hours. If you have a hard stimulus, um, peak collagen uh, supercompensation seventy two hours. Um, what else is that? Is, is Bony stress is a little longer. It's in the eighties. Yeah. Uh, but muscle and muscles are sort of on the other side in the sort of fifty to sixty hour territory. Yeah. But if you average them all out, when you look at bone, nervous system, tendons, collagen, all that stuff, seventy two seems to be the sweet spot mm. between getting it like enough time to be back to normal, but not so long that things start to weaken off on the other side of things. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying you should only train every 72 hours. That would be ridiculous. You wouldn't get anywhere. Um, but you should be mixing your your stimulus up so that you're yeah. doing you don't, only doing one really hard type of session roughly every 72 hours of, of that exact nature. Yeah, so you... It might be 48 sometimes. So you mix up your different stresses on the body. So mm-hmm. uh, Monday might be weights. The next day might be uh, hard conditioning. Then yeah. the next day might be a hard, hard power and speed session. Like, yeah. So you're training the nervous system and the muscles and the tendons and, and the body in general in different ways on different days. So for some people, uh, to pick someone at random, myself, uh, that would be run, ride, lift. And I'm using my ride essentially as recovery from my run. We'll talk more about that in a second, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm similar. I uh, run, ride, run, and then... <laughs> run, ride, run, run. <laughs> run, ride, run, and then I ride, swim, run. So Because okay. the... I yeah. still have. I still haven't talked to the government about changing from a seven day week to a six day week because <laughs> we're stuck with sevens. I have to go two and forty eight hours. Uh, Otherwise, true. I wouldn't get my third one in because my days because with the Saturday early morning start yeah, it changes okay. things. And you care about it on a week to week basis, like that's why you do it. Well, I just otherwise uh, every uh, every second or third week I'd miss one of those runs and only yeah. do two, not three, because yeah, of having yeah. a Saturday morning yeah. and yeah. something might come up. And, Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So I, I keep it to Monday, Wednesdays, uh, and then Saturday afternoon are my runs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what should we talk about first? Uh, I, I think, if I may, I think mm. we should start with uh, what are actually are the structures and the things inside the body that need recovery? Because yeah. it's not just muscles. Mm. They're a yeah. big part, but there's, uh, so there's muscles as one. Yep. There's tendons and joints, bones, nervous mm. system, uh, and then 
uh, immune system, like the whole body. There's right. lots of different parts going on. Talk about that. So let's start with muscles. Okay. Muscles is a simple one. Uh, from a peripheral point of view, uh, they become damaged with what's called micro tears through work. So uh, particularly eccentric training. Mm. So anytime you're doing uh, landing or sprinting or uh, deceleration type work, uh, along with obviously weight training stuff, you effe effectively you're ripping the muscles apart on a microscopic level, mm. or so the theory goes. And that micro- Hilarious that it's still a theory. 2018, <laughs> it's still a, yeah, we've got a theory on this. On the sliding filaments. Uh, and so those micro tears uh, are effectively micro strains of the muscle. Yeah. And so they require time to be stitched back up. And the beautiful thing is if you stress them and, and rip the muscles apart in this way, and then you allow that 48 to 72 hours, they will stitch back together stronger and with more collagen and more tissue than needed before. Uh, yeah, that's the magic of it. That's, that's uh, the awesome thing. Uh, we were talking the other week about how the eccentric stress actually causes um, the myosin heads to be ripped off. Mm. Uh, so interesting, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so let's not go too deep. But when you contract the muscle and you're concentrically, so shortening a muscle, the, the myosin heads kind of grab and pull, grab and pull. When you go the other way, they don't just reverse that process. They kind of get stretched. And if you stretch them intensely enough, they will rip. Yeah. And so that's where that micro damage comes. It's really cool. And so that's why you can do um, concentric work uh, shortening work and uh, not have that much soreness. Like you can do Olympic lifting. If you're doing ollie lifting and then just dropping the weights, um, you can do that quite intensely and have almost no DOMS. Well, bike is a great example. Yeah. Because there's no landing ground reaction forces like there is with running. You can bike a lot more often than you can run, mm -hmm. which yeah. is why it's such a great cardio supplement. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's muscles. Uh, and so, yeah, we're looking at a 72 hour. 48 to 72. Depending, depending on the depth of, of how much you. Um, because it all depends on how, how uh, deep a hole you dig. So if you smash yourself really hard, it's a deep yeah. hole, and you, you could do a session that's so light that you're good to go again in 24. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's go uh, tendons and collagen, mm. I think is probably next. So tendons uh, have a little less blood flow. They take a little longer, and typically they're going to be 72. And even sometimes in... For older people, uh, 96 hours, they can take a while to, to come a, back up. That's the sad thing about recovery. Once you uh, once you hit 25 and up, everything yeah. just starts to slow down. Yeah. When you're a kid, you could play a, a six-day basketball tournament. I remember doing these, a uh, six-game in two-day basketball tournament and be ready to play domestic again on the Monday. Yeah. Not, Not when you're 27 years old yeah. anymore. We barely get through two games in two days these <laughs> days. Um, yeah, so... so you go. So tendons, yep, uh, they take a little longer than muscle, uh, and that's mm. due to that restricted blood flow and just the this they're just less active. They're still an active tissue, but muscles are really responsive, whereas yep. tendons are a little slower. Uh, and they respond really nicely from a recovery point of view to isometric stuff. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, isometric load seems to really promote that collagen synthesis and yep. gets everything going in that. And sense. if there, if there is any grumpiness, the analgesia, the analgesic effect you get from it is is useful as well. Yeah. Um, bones. Bones are slow. So uh, a lot of people think of bone as static. Yeah. Now, like we see our fingernails, we see our teeth, they never, they barely change. Yeah. Bone must be the same. It's just, it's like furniture. It's just in there and it's yeah, set it's in like stone. struts compared to the muscles. And, yeah. yeah. The truth is your bone is constantly being turned over and rebuilt, broken down, built up, broken down, built up through stress. Yeah. So uh, our nutrition plays a part in that, but also uh, load bearing exercise. So anything from walking up to heavy resistance training up to plyometric jump type work is going to be stressing your bones just like it stresses your muscles and your tendons. Yeah. And so that bone does respond to stress, particularly ground reaction force work. Yeah. So jumping, running, uh, anything based on the land like yeah. that with that hard ground reaction force stuff will really stress bones. The, um, the analogy I like to use to try and explain that, that turnover is the idea of um, Imagining a brick wall, mm -hmm. um, and each brick is a little osteocyte, so it's a little that's a little, little muscle bone cell, bone cell, um, and that each has an expiry date. And you can, if you if you put more, if you're running around more often, you're actually going to be increasing the rate at which, and they kind of go like they dis, each, each <laughs> dissolves, yeah, yeah, and again, and then in an orderly fashion, it gets replaced by another brick in that same spot. Um, and so where people get into real problems is in terms of stress reactions, mm. stress fractures is where the rate of bricks exploding exceeds the rate of bricks being replaced. Don't think of your bones exploding, but just for the brick wall analogy. Disappearing. <laughs> Dissolving, yeah. yeah. Um, and, then that, and that's the problem. So if you, if you disobeyed, and that's a, that's a principle that you can really um, 
you can really break yourself against. Like mm. there's, you can do everything else beautifully. You can have the best core strength. You can have everything else, your recovery protocols. You know, you can be normal tech booting. You can be magnesium pool swimming. You can be doing all the Rolls Royce stuff things, yeah. uh, having a masseur follow you around, but nothing can compensate for just that time to allow the bricks to be replaced. Which is why you should have at least one, yeah. if not two days with no hard ground reaction forces, yeah. where you walk the dog and you kick the footy, you yeah. go for a bike ride, stuff like that. I think it's statutory minimum one day a week where your bones get to rest. If you do that, you are um, increasing, you're adding years to your career, I reckon, mm. and you're also reducing your risk of a stress fracture down to relatively low. Um, if you go two days off a week, it's, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but... Very unlikely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and look, we see a lot of stresses. We, see, we have a very tall population in a sport that does uh, a hell of a lot of training. Yep. So we uh, have probably seen more people come through our doors with, with stresses. Than, Doing the than rehabs most. and whatnot. And, yep. yeah. um, and I can say with, with certainty and authority, it's so much easier to not get the stressy than to rehab the stress. Oh, the, the, the return is so tricky. Yeah, you've yeah. really got to nail that, um, that reload. Um, so it's definitely tricky. So yeah, that, that's bone. So the, the law there to obey is try to avoid having the exact same stresses going through those bones yep. on, on back-to-back days as much as you can. So this is where um, doing a little bit of grass running in a yeah. If you're a court sport or a hard court yeah. athlete, doing a little bit of grass running for your conditioning in the off season is a yeah. good way of mixing it up. That's great. Uh, and if you do stuff on the grass, maybe get on the court every now and again, just yeah. to give your bones and your tendons a little bit of a different mm-hmm. stress. Um, let's quickly rush through nervous system, nervous system and then we'll get into, into um, the recovery, the, the, the strategies. Yeah. So the nervous system, we've only got one and it controls the entire body. So you could do a hard and bodybuilders fall into this trap with their, and powerlifters with heavy training where they try and train a different body part or a different lift mm. every day and they end up not giving as much love to the one the second day as they did on the first. Yeah. Because the nervous system is just a little drained. Because every day, because you, if you divide the body up and you go, okay, today's back and biceps and tomorrow is chest and triceps and then the next day is legs, legs and yep. shoulders or whatever it is. Um, you've got to remember that every day is nervous system day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that's, that's really important. And, and the, the classic examples of athletes that have gone away on holidays, uh, not done any training for two weeks, come back and they are massively outperforming what they were doing before they went away because mm. their nervous system was just tired. They just weren't giving it yeah. time off. Um, so I think that's a good general... They're the things we're recovering? Yeah. Let's talk about how we're going to recover them. So uh, the single biggest thing is time. So it's allowing the spacing. And I, then I think a very close second, and this is up for debate, but I think uh, inside out recovery i think the idea of the best way to recover is to actually have your body gently perform work with your heart pumping blood around mm. the body so the idea of simply termed active recovery is yeah what people talk about yeah and and um active active recovery either fully deloaded like on a bike or, or a cross par- trainer I, I, well i think i think cross trainers are partial deload yeah because you are still on your feet aren't you yeah. With the biker on your bum. Yeah. That's yeah. Good point. Um, so I think in a fully deloaded category is cro- is um, bike and uh, swimming. Uh, and then in the partial is cross trainer uh, and even like a, one of those cool anti-gravity treadmills. Yep. Um, uh, and uh, in, in a sense, uh, a partial deload is also maybe to change the surface. Like doing a, so, so for some people who are, you know, if you've got a, a serious runner, they might just do a, a light, 3k on grass and that's actually a really good relative to the normal loading that is considered an active recovery workout yeah 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 uh, so i think that active recovery because what you're doing is you're getting you're getting the muscles working um so you're getting them contracting lengthening you're getting them actually doing their thing and you're getting rid of waste products and you're getting fresh blood through i don't i don't everything else is great and i'm interested in we'll finding all, in all the one percenters but I think the big rock of recovery is just a basic, appropriate active recovery that actually gets the heart going a bit. Mm. And you can really just get, get because it's, a, it's a, so many processes are stimulated by great blood flow. Yeah, because what you do is you, you're moving lymphatic fluid to yeah. the lymph system. You're taking waste products away from the muscle. So lactic acid, hydronides, creatine, all this, all this stuff we use to work hard the day before or early yeah. in the day. And we're flushing it back to the heart and to the other tissue for the body to handle it and deal with it. At the same time, we're also delivering the good stuff. 
So we're delivering new proteins, we're delivering glycogen and glucose so that the body and the muscles and everything can start restoring and regrowing itself. So biggest rock, some form of active recovery, most likely deloaded. My favorite, uh, deloaded is good, but I actually like taking advantage of the biophilia effect and going outside for a walk. Yeah, okay. Getting a little bit of sun, go and take the footy, go down the park, have a little kick. Nothing, no sprinting after the ball or anything like that, but just getting outside because then you get the feel good effect of, yeah, okay. the, for me, the mental effect of getting outside and getting a little bit of sun mm. really helps as well. You need less recovery than I do. Like, so when I, <laughs> that wouldn't work for me. Really? Yeah. No, I need to, in order to come up, because I'm trying to come up fresh rapidly. And so I need to, because I'm older, I need to actually go um, a little, just, just the stroll wouldn't get it done for me. Right. Yeah. It's, a, it's like a, a long stroll. I go for 45 minutes. No. Uh, and so, if, well, I suppose it's interesting because the other option, which we're about to wear is bike, which is yeah. what you do. So if I came here and sat on the bike, mentally that would drive me crazy coming to work on an off day for an active recovery yeah. session when I could be outside okay. having well, fun. And, and I, mean, I suppose for me, I've got the bike at home in my home office and I have Netflix. Yeah, uh, so that's, that's the big difference here. So the the I think that's one big thing with all these recovery methods is uh, make it downhill running. Yeah, make it. It's in, all good and well to say. Oh, downhill skiing. Downhill skiing. Downhill running, bad idea. <laughs> Telephemoral pain, tendinopathy. Downhill run skiing. <laughs> downhill skiing with all this stuff is really, really important yeah. so that you actually do it. Because yeah. the thing, like Darren said, time, active recovery routines yeah. and habits, make them easy to do so you will do them regularly every week. Easy to do and pleasurable. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, okay. So there, that's the, the big rock. Yep. I, this, the next biggest rock, I think is probably, I know it's lame because we've talked about it before, but it's probably foam rolling. It's probably. Well, actually, foam rolling in this sense, well, actually, before all this, so time is first. We talked about yeah, that. We're going, out, we're going out of order. What's actually probably even more important is sleep and nutrition. Yeah, okay. Yep. We actually haven't even mentioned yeah, those. Because yeah. if you, you're, you're stay, so right, yeah. you stay up all night and then go for a brisk walk or sit on the, <laughs> sit on the bike for 20 minutes the next day, they ain't going to do all jack. Right. So let's talk about leucine. Leucine, yeah, cool. Okay, so nutritionally... Uh, we talked about this last week in the yeah. BCAAs episode. Yeah, well. great. So we'll just, just touch on it. But nutritionally, you want to have great food that uh, immediately straight after your training is easy to digest and your body can process and, and utilize. Um, and if you can have... Uh, something like whey protein with a high leucine content, you're going to trigger an entire cascading process of, um, of Cell recovery. Cell repair and regeneration. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so that's really important. Um, and then if you are not sleeping, obviously that's disastrous. And if you're stressed. So if you're in fight or flight mode, your body won't recover. You would need to be in rest and digest. Which is, again, right. where the walk comes in nicely for me. It does. Because it's very pleasurable and I yeah. really enjoy it. Yeah. Getting out in the sun. Anyway, I really enjoy it. I'm making my, I'm making a case here, but it's not going well. Darren's face is not suggesting he's enjoying this idea. Just, a, just such an aggressive. Uh, it's fun, and I like it. <laughs> okay, so I, I take your point. Also, I just on a side note, um, I can't walk fast in my barefoot shoes. Uh-huh. I can only like I can't get a brisk walk, and it kind of hurts my right knee to do that. I can run beautifully in my barefoot shoes, but and I, and I don't really like the long walk. I don't know. I, you know, in fact, this is just a childhood thing. Like I never liked walking much. Uh, I was famous for riding my bike everywhere, and um, from a very, I started riding a bike at about four, and I would like I could ride a bike all day, but I could run somewhere, but did not make me walk. Ugh, walk. <laughs> walking, walking is like doing. Um, you know, doing a times table or something for me. All right, because I'm quite a fan. So yeah. the, the, right, we've <laughs> yeah. got we've got to the bottom of it. I'll now drop the walking. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's pick up in order now where we're talking about. So time, time is your number one factor. Spreading out your workouts effectively. Yep. Sleep and nutrition. Yeah, I'll link to those podcasts. We won't talk about them too much here. Yep. But leucine, protein, good carbs, things like yep. that, and enough quality sleep. Hmm. The next thing would be your active recovery. Yes, some moving. So yep. in my case, I love a good walk. In Dome's case, get on the bike, watching an episode of Netflix and moving the legs. And I'm watching The Accountant at the moment. Oh, good movie. <laughs> Don't spoil it, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Um, I have to watch things that aren't too hard to follow. Uh, so I'm, yeah, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I want my heart rate to be up around 150 or so. Yep. Uh, and so I don't want to be having to follow a complex yep. um, Complex plot. 150, though, uh, for those listening along who have got heart rate is probably a little high for most of our team sport athletes. Yeah, probably. That's probably in your zone of interference. So for you, you're getting a little bit of conditioning effect out of them. Yeah. For our athletes, for team sport and explosive type athletes, probably more like 120 to 130, especially so. if you're fitter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just, for me, I'm, I'm using it also like, just as Get a bit fat of a burning, burning and yeah, everything else. Um, Next. 
Foam rolling, I think. I think uh, attending to the, your tissue quality, keeping keeping things moving along nicely. Targeted work, um, massage, myotherapy, like just body work where people are, where you or someone else is actually loosening up trigger points, getting yep. things moving nicely, and making sure. Because the thing is, you can you can attend to your blood flow, but if you've got certain areas that are really um, really tight and locked up, they're not going to benefit from that as much as if you're consistently attending to tissue density. What's also nice about foam rolling is you're getting a little bit of that blood flow effect at the same time as yeah, you're losing off the tissue. Not as good as you know, getting out and moving, it but it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a start. So you can get a little bit of blood flow through them, particularly your legs, hmm. uh, and start flushing some stuff back from your calves and your hamstrings and whatnot. So I think that's really good. Yeah. Um, let's talk, and then, so then I think they're the, they're the really big ones. Then the, Can we talk uh, briefly about the... Um, Micro trauma effect of the, your theory about I don't to be clear, it's not my theory; it's other people's oh, sorry. theory. Yep. I don't want to take credit for it. there. There is a theory which I subscribe to, which is that how can I, uh, I'll set this up. So, what we have found and what other people have found is that the level of recovery ability that you get from foam rolling is disproportionately high. Like you're foam rolling, and it not it, it gets rid of DOMS in a way. It's, like people go away, they do six games in six days and they come back and like, I had no soreness. It was really weird. The whole tournament, yeah. You know, and so there is a theory that uh, the pressure from the foam rolling uh, affects your nociceptors and actually in the same way that a um, same way that a vaccine is a small dose of a virus and your body responds to that and makes itself better, uh, the idea that the pressure is maybe affecting the nociceptors and it's enhancing your tissue's healing response it's giving your supercompensation a boost. Yeah, it's giving you a giving you a push. And via the and your body via pushes the, back in the same way that heat shock, you know, like we'll talk about that in a minute. Via the nervous system, yeah. Yeah, so that's really I, um I wouldn't put large sums of money on it, but I'd I'd put a few hundred. I think it's an interesting because it's, it's it more explains than just, a gap in our knowledge. Because there is a gap in our knowledge. This stuff seems to work better than just it's more than just blood flow and trigger point release. It has to be. Is there's something bigger underlying it? I think it's a parasympathetic tone pushback effect that you're talking about there. I, yeah. mean, I think that's really interesting. And you get a similar effect with static stretching. Yeah. So that's why people love yoga so much. Yeah. You get that endorphin rush and that gentle movement and flow yeah, and mobility. Really yeah. So if I'm rolling, some static stretching. Not um, fun, but add the Netflix or yeah. you know, watch some TV while you're doing it. Yeah. makes it a little more bearable. Um, and an interesting one is soreness because I think, I, think, I think ranking this way is probably a bit artificial. I think yeah. it's, got, it's got an academic by this stage. Yeah. Uh, you sauna... Five, six times a week? Four to five to six times a week. Six if I'm, if I'm good. Yep. Um, we've talked about this in the past, but let's just hit the highlight reel. Uh, so when you're saunering, you're actually, it, one of the really magical things is your heart, because of the stress, is actually, you're getting a lot of the benefits you get out of your active recovery, out of the bike. Like if you can be sitting back, listening to a podcast, your heart's thumping away and you're actually getting work without having had to have worked your muscles at all. Or your joints, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So you can get your heart up to like 141. What does yours get up to, do you think? I haven't done it, uh, but I get out and I like, I can see my chest like boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom. Okay. And it's really, really heavy, fast beat. Uh, so what would you guess? guess to make probably the 150s, 140, 150, I reckon. Really? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's up there. Uh, I sit in there for 25 minutes mm. is usually my minimum. Try and get up to 30 if I've got a little extra time. Yeah. Uh, I sweat a bucket load. I sweat so much. Which is great because you're getting rid of some heavy metals out of your, your system. You would have, you would have like, if we were to do like a biopsy, you'd be like the, the lowest heavy metals person in Australia. I can't be doing all right. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's those, great. Those are my, Jacob uh, Jacob sweats watching telly. <laughs> Summer here is not fun for me. It's a challenge. Uh, a lot of boost. I do a lot of those electrolyte, <laughs> electrolyte tablets for me. Uh, but yeah, and so you're getting that, and you're also getting a bigger endorphin dump. Mm. So there's again another parasympathetic nervous system yep. effect of you. It's tough while you're doing it, but afterwards you're like you feel amazing. Mm. You feel warm and alert and awake. It's just really really good. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to the cryo chamber thing where you just feel like you want to go and get in a fight because <laughs> so I've done that. Uh, and that, that was a, an exciting adrenaline rush, but I'm like, yeah, it's not a, mm. not a day to day. And also it's just unpleasant. Whereas there's something connected with the sauna too. I think, you know, like if you're doing a visualization exercise, people often tell you to imagine, um, imagine you're on a, you know, in your happy place. And for so many people, the happy place is tropical beach. It's warm and sunny. Yeah. You know? Not many people are saying snow. Yeah. 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 So I think that element too, uh, too plays into it. And then what you're getting to is you're getting a um, 
you're stretching your veins and arteries. You're actually yeah. Um, so talk about that a bit. Seeing, like elasticity so benefits. So you get a big vasodilation effect, and then because of the increased blood flow through those dilated vessels, you're getting some stretch. So you're getting arterial and venous stretch, and so having a more pliable, flexible vein, venous and arterial system the words out here, yep. uh, will really uh, help with your fitness. Uh, it'll help with your ability for your system to go from parasympathetic to sympathetic and back. So it makes your heart rate variability more flexible and more uh, malleable. Cool. Um, and so there's some really good benefits there. Yeah. Now we're going to run out of video soon for those watching. We're going go to roll on because We've got yeah. heaps to get through. Yeah. Or, or not heaps, but we've got a few more things to get through. Yeah. So um, I think that benefit too of the sauna after, so if you've just lifted, and then, because my ideal scenario would be having a little sauna out next to my little home gym, uh, and then to lift and then sauna straight afterwards. Mm. And that, that's tremendous benefit to that too, because you're then stretching. So that slight constriction, you're stretching out. Uh, I think it's huge. So I'd do that. I'll do cardio in the morning and then jump in the sauna afterwards. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Should we go to the flip side of that and talk about ice? Yeah, let's talk about ice. We've done a couple of episodes on cryotherapy. Yep. Um, and I'll link those. But ice, uh, ice baths in particular can mm. have a benefit as well. Mm. Uh, we did. If you could link the one we did where where the, it was that terrible article, the article that misquoted the scientific paper. Yeah, because yeah. the argument the argument for ice baths is there's a prophylactic effect of uh, preventing inflammatory things from developing. There's a um, which in this case, inflammatory things are actually beneficial because they start the recovery process. Mm. But in some athletes, like if you, if you had if you've got players, you've got a team with some banged up bodies. Uh, sometimes just getting in the ice bath and and getting the joints not to get angry can be really mm-hmm. really useful. Uh, so ice baths are pretty valuable. The other effect is they are forcefully shunting you into parasympathetic mode, so they're helping you to to relax. There's that initial shock followed by a subsequent relaxing and parasympathetic switch off of the body, yeah. which is really paradoxical for most people because they just think of ice and they just think of discomfort and stress. Yeah. But if you stay in there for that two to three, even up to four if you're brave minutes, mm. you can really get a good effect. And same as the sauna afterwards, you have a shower and you warm back up, you feel mm. amazing. Yeah. Uh, so and I suppose it's a simple, they're, they're cheap, they're easy to implement from an administrative point of view. Um, the only thing is that some people just hate them and the, I think the level of stress and the level of, I've, I've seen this with athletes where particularly super lean athletes seem to really feel it mm-hmm. worse um, where whatever benefit you're getting for the relaxation is actually completely ruined by just how much they hate it and how much it makes them kind of hate sports science and athletic development. Yeah. So it know, comes an association, distrust yeah, and dislike. And, yeah. and, I, and with this applies less. So I've found with track and field with swimmers, with individual sport athletes, but team sport athletes in particular, very often have a finite diligence budget. Mm. They will they will have a certain allocation of of effort they'll put into this thing. And so if you're if you're taking if you're making them do ice baths, maybe now they won't roll properly or they won't do their bike properly. Or they won't even just get out on the bike and do, yeah do their active recovery stuff. That it is actually like we talked about before the bigger rocks. Yeah. So I think ice baths are great, but you've got to see them in uh, where they sit in the hierarchy. Um, and can be excellent at times. If you're doing back to so for us. With WNBL, we're doing back-to-back games. Yeah, everyone's ice bathing because we we really need to do everything we can to get them up because you might be playing another game 20 hours later. Uh, and so you want to do everything you can to be to up top and going. Up. Yeah. Can we talk about um, compression now? I was going to say, just to stay on topic with temperature stuff, should we talk about uh, hot, cold, just to yeah, put sure. the two together? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so the last option, which is probably the easiest and lowest barrier to entry one for most people, is just hot, cold showers or hot, cold therapy of some sort so you jump in a shower warm you then slam or creep it towards cold depending on your bravery yeah. uh, and then you do usually minute on minute off of each for three or four cycles and what you're doing is you're taking advantage of the constriction of the mm. cold so the cold tightens up all your vessels and your muscles then the heat expands everything back out so you're artificially pumping blood through your body so i'm gonna i'm gonna question your your description of that i don't I think it is. That's the, the theory. <laughs> I'll just clarify. <laughs> the problem with it is, uh, how many people are able to actually? You're in a nice warm shower, and then change to cold, and then change back to warm. 
Like I think it's it's logistically really easy, but in terms of of compliance, it's I find it easier to get in something cold and stay in something cold. Just get used to it, or be in. It. I think the, the the jumping between is in the shower at least is the hardest. Well, I could do it. I could do it. I suppose the benefit in this situation I'm talking about is the fact you don't have to go buy ice. Oh yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. like logistically, it's. A million times better. It's just because you just turn a tap. Like it's so and it's cool. even better because you can just download the Core Advantage interval timer and build yourself a custom one on one off hot cold. And it's red and green too, so you're yeah, good to good. go. All right. <laughs> um, all right. I think that's temperature. Mm-hmm. Let's talk compression. Now. Yes. Which we've done a whole episode on. There's going to be yeah. a heap of linked episodes associated with this one. So, mm. uh, and so what we're talking about this, uh, I think it's worth mentioning. There's a few companies that have started up doing some some recovery yeah. stuff. Uh, one of our friends, uh, Rodney Blackburn from Axis, uh, he started up a little uh, company, which is pretty cool. So they're They're doing a great some, space, yeah. Yeah, great space. They've done a really good job. And they're doing recovery work. Um, they're out in Berwick. Um, and P3 Sports Performance, they're all, and, and uh, a friend of ours, Claire Papos, uh, is running that place. Um, uh, they also have magnesium bars and ice, both those, those yeah. Places that have a bunch of different things, uh, which are all you know useful and and good things, provided and this is the big thing, provided not uh, substituting them for the big rocks. Yeah, not being lazy about your good, your important stuff. First. I think those things are like um, they're great and they're like supplements. Yeah, you know, in the same way that whey protein is excellent, it's not a substitute uh, for a good real meal. I think those things are like they're, they're excellent supplements, and if you want to supplement your recovery with them. Hell yeah. Yeah. If you've got um, the time or the professionalism or the resources to do it, for that's sure. That's great. Um, but they're not substitutes for the, the basics. So uh, compression. Uh, at, at the lowest level, you can have compression wear, which helps. Talk yep. about how that benefits. So it's mixed in the research mm. uh, as about how it beneficial is, but sometimes it's hard to take research at its title or as its abstract because they do smaller groups or they do... Yep different situations or different scenarios that you would actually see from the real world what one benefit is the actual compression is having a lymph drainage effect so it's actually improving vessels flow and getting fluid particularly from your legs because yeah. fluid kind of pools in your feet and yeah. your calves when we are up vertical and it helps get that fluid back to the heart to yeah. get fresh blood through the body the other sorry i'm yeah. going to interrupt because no, I'm, I'm worried i'll forget um so when i went and visited um uh, my friend ben sharp at oakley charges uh one of the things he had was he had a, a series of recovery options and they had a good little ice bath set up there and one of them was just everyone lying with their um you yeah, lying on your back with your bum against the wall feet up on the wall mm, yeah just to drain the blood out yeah and it just reminded me that sometimes these things like it, ben's a good thinker in, in the sense that he's looking for easy doable things that a, a large squad of potentially few, uh, elite footy players can do and it's one of those moments. I was like, "That's just so elegant and simple. Like, it's great. Yeah. Just lie. Just, just reverse gravity. It's been five minutes upside down. <laughs> you know. Um, and I even saw a thing the other week about um, those gravity boots, mm. um, which I'm still interested in. It's just, it just feel like it's a broken neck waiting to happen. Is my I know. my biggest concern. But I'm just so. My full sentence was: I'm still interested in finding a safe, idiot-proof way you can do that because the idea of that inversion. The traction on the spine. There's so yeah. much good stuff, but yeah, I worry about just a broken neck. Yeah. You can get the traction tables. They're doing better, less torture chamber ones, <laughs> chambery ones <laughs> yeah. of those. But um, uh, maybe the next couple of years, someone will get on that. Yeah. Sorry, anyway. So that just that simple thing. That was up, that's a good one. Um, and then the second effect of uh, compression garments, in the simplest sense, is the proprioceptive effect. Mm. So by having that feel on your skin, uh, I'm fuzzy on the actual mechanism, but the idea is basically that you can feel it. And so that kind of gives you awareness and it feels snug and it promotes recovery through that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Help me out here, Norm. Um, I know that you feel that. Like, like if, if you're wearing compression socks, you find yourself doing more calf raises just when you're just moving still, them around. Yeah. You know, so there's something in that as well. Um, and then I think that, that, that basic, the first one's the big one. I think that's also useful. Hmm. Um, so that's, that's a basic compression gun, but they're also compression. Uh, equipment, so the the Normatec, the uh, boots, um, the the um, they're like um, kind of like wade, like fishing waders that go right up to your hips. The boots that go all the way to your hips, uh, and they provide they basically just uh, do a graded 
squashing of your legs. Um, so you feel this really kind of like a massage chair, but scientific and with air as opposed to with just yeah, modules. it's just squeezing your legs and you feel really good afterwards. Um, I've never done them. Yeah, um, feels nice on your knees. Your body feels pretty good. People then put them on their um, people use them on their arms as well. Cool. Um, and I reckon there's also so there's a they're enhancing that um, that venous return. Uh, I reckon there's also a thing where there must be a parasympathetic. Um, thing going on with the pressure. So light, light touch, light massage actually um, has a sympathetic uh, effect, uh, whereas deep massage will often relax you. And so I, I wonder if there's something going on with that mm. as well. Um, one so you're thing getting a bit of massage and compression at the same time, and so it's like a foam, foam rolling compression combo. There's something deeply relaxing about that. I mean, it's, this is, we, we, we're veering into, I want to call it hippie territory. But Esoteric. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I once saw a documentary about this autistic woman who is the world's leading expert in cattle pen design. Find your niche and stick to it. <laughs> uh, and the reason is is because she is in, she has the same sensitivities that startle and upset her as would a cow. So she goes in. So and the the business of um, slaughtering animals is it's a big business, and you need. Ideally, animals that are arriving ready to be slaughtered, not stressed, not running backwards. You want it as easy as, as possible for it to work. And so she would go in and she'd go, okay, that little step there, that's going to spook the cow. Um, the way you're allowing some leaves to brush from the other thing, that's going to spook the cow. Like she would have this, mm. that, that was her thing, was just creating the best way to not spook them. Um, but in the documentary, it had this amazing device she had made because she had... Um, anxieties and sensitivities and it was this squeezing machine that would just kind of put pressure over a whole body it's kind of like a um, like hug. a sleeping bag hug <laughs> yeah and it was really interesting and she would just go in that and that would just she and she didn't articulate the science of why it helped and I'm not sure that she knew but I remember watching going ah oh, there's got to be some um, parasympathetic uh, benefit there yeah it's kind of cool so um, those compression sleeves pretty good. They're very expensive, so you're not going to run out and, and buy buy one for yourself. But they're useful. Um, but again, they are uh, they're not a, a substitute; they're a supplement. What else is there? I'm struggling to think of any. I feel like we talked about most of the of the important things. Uh, the stim machines, you know, people. Oh, the will, tens machines. The yep. Tens machines where they'll, they'll stimulate your muscles to activate and work. Uh, which is giving you a similar effect. I think it's just like a bit like the bike, but minus the work, you're getting a whole lot of micro contractions. Mm. Uh, I think they're useful as well. Um, hmm. So uh, I feel like we've exhausted all the things. That's, my knowledge of current technology and science and evidence would suggest that's about the list, sure. list of things you can do. I'm sure there'll be another thing or two we've forgotten, the little, little one percent. Yeah. Uh, my advice is focus on on the big rocks. Get Time, sleep, nutrition, uh, some sort of active movement. Yeah. Getting out on the bike, on the cross trainer, a walk, a swim. Mm. Hydrotherapy is good in effect in effect yeah. with the water as well. So yeah. you're getting that that pressure from the water. Um, ocean walking that does work. That sort yeah. of stuff. It's active. It's moving. The fundamentals of foam rolling, stretching, yoga, those sort of things are all great as well. Uh, and then you've got your extras, things like compression, hot therapy, cold therapy, hot and cold therapy together. Yeah. Uh, and then things like uh, compression boots and stuff like that as well. And I think your point is really well made that, to, to title in that make sure that you structure it in such a way as it's not a burden. It's, it's uh, downhill skiing. So you can run ski downstairs. <laughs> downhill. <laughs> <laughs> so you can ski downhill with your recovery work. I'll be serious for a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so make it easy to do so you'll actually do it so you get the benefit. Because it can, like, like in the weight room, like with cardio, consistency rules. Yeah. If you are consistent, you will get the results. It's not a thing you do once or twice. It's a thing that yeah. builds power over time. Uh, the program, the program you do, the good program you do consistently is better than the perfect program you can't, yeah, act, can't execute. So it's better to do something decent than to go. Oh, I wish I had a this, and I wish I had a That's sauna, and I wish I lived near these guys. Just do what you can. Do what you've got access to. Yeah. yeah. Do the fundamentals brutally well. 
there will be a heap of resources with this one. So we've already got episodes on ice baths, on compression, on saunas, on nutrition, on sleep. On supercompensation. On supercompensation, on foam rolling, on stretching. That will all be uh, added into this. Uh, so if you want those, you'll have to head to our website and go to the blog. Or if you're on Facebook or uh, YouTube right now, there'll be links yeah. in the description yeah. above or below. Uh, if we forgot any, if we forgot any technologies or any uh, concepts, principles, ideas, yeah, let us know. We can uh, maybe do a part two mm. or at least a little tack on at some point. Yeah, sounds good. Down the track. Awesome. All right, can we just finish off very quickly? Mm. Um, we'll have more to talk about this next time. But how amazing was the first day of Combine? Yeah. Last night was amazing. So if you didn't see our Instagram post, uh, Lay broke the men's uh, vert record with the last jump of the night. We had, uh, had two guys level it before him, Cal and Matt, leveled it in the class before. Yeah. And then he comes and says, oh, can I, can I give the jump a go? I'm a little late, but can I just jump in? So we jumped in and got a 76.2. Which standing. Is standing very standing, standing, no counter movement. I mean, no counter movement, but no step in. Yeah, so no gather step, no yeah. run up, uh, which is a 30-inch vert. Yeah. And then Ali, earlier in the night, uh, and for Lay, that's a 10-centimeter improvement since January. That's awesome. So he's really putting the good work, so yeah. super proud of him. Yeah. And then Ali added uh, five, five and a half centimeters to her vert and broke what, if she did it at the AFL Combine, would be the new AFLW Combine record. Yeah, which that's is awesome. amazing. So she uh, jumped 64.9 centimeters uh, up from 59. So that's incredible. So it was a record-breaking Breaking night. Yeah. Um, that was day one of the combine. So that was day one. So the, plenty more to come. The bar has been set. I feel like I know it's it's my level of excitement because I, I think our place is well, our place is the center of my universe. But I feel like it's like the Olympics starting. Yeah, like it's really and there's a bit of build up with everyone. It's uh, it's really cool. It went really well. Yeah, good stuff. All right, we'll see you next time, guys.